Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1164. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about will the Fed have to raise interest rates higher and faster because that caused the sell-off yesterday with the Dow closing down 570 points, turning negative for 2023. We call what the Fed does when it affects markets by talking jawboning. That's the official term. And Powell was jawboning yesterday. He basically suggested that rates may need to go higher for longer, which made the market fear potentially larger rate hikes, especially at the next Fed policy meeting on March 21st and 22nd. As I said, with the Dow down 575 points, it turned in the red for the year. But the S&P 500 is still up positively for the year, as is the NASDAQ. The S&P is up 3.8% year-to-date, and the Nasdaq's up 10.2% year-to-date. When Chairman Powell talks about interest rates, it affects the bond market and projections for future interest rates. That also causes stock indexes to fall. The two-year Treasury yield jumped to its highest level since 2007, which was 5%. What he said was the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be higher than previously anticipated. If the totality of the data were to indicate that faster tightening is warranted, we would be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. So that's basically saying we could go from 25 basis points or quarter of a percent rate hikes to half a percent or 50 basis point rate hikes at the next meeting. But that all depends again on the strength of incoming economic data because the Fed is data dependent. So they're looking at the numbers. If the numbers come in weaker than expected, then they won't be increasing rates as much. If it comes in stronger than expected, then they're going ahead with their more aggressive rate hikes apparently. The peak for the federal funds rate is called the terminal rate, and that's the rate that they are projecting they're going to at the highest point. And so it sounds like what they're doing is going higher than previously expected for the terminal rate, which is now expected to be five and a half percent to five and three quarters percent by summer. And the October Fed funds rate contract is pricing in 5.58 percent interest rates in October. However, not everyone thinks that this is terrible news. Wells Fargo equity strategist Anna Hahn said odds of a soft landing are actually increasing despite this sell-off. She's saying the market reaction and repricing of inflation expectations may actually be a good thing for investors hoping for a softer landing. What's also coinciding is the market is pricing in a higher chance of a softer landing. Again, it's strange to have both. It can feel uncomfortable, but it's constructive, she said. She went on to say stickier inflation may dash investors' hopes near term for a Fed pivot, but it actually could pay off in the long run. Were inflation to come crashing down, the Fed was at risk of overdoing it or tightening too much and tightening us into that recession. That was a concern that there would be a misalignment with timing. While inflation is easing slower than expected, the pace still reflects a healthy economy being impacted by the Fed. If they can continue to nibble away at inflation, I think you raise the possibility and the chances of achieving that soft landing that we so desperately want, she said. Yeah, well, I'm in that camp of soft landing. I do believe we still are able to have a soft landing because a lot of the Fed indicators are on a lagging basis and they're backward looking. They're not forward looking. They're not anticipating where we're going. They're looking at things that have already happened. And also raising interest rates should slow the economy down, but it has a lag time before we start to see that result. So that lag time Since we've been now on this trajectory for a year, 
should really start to show up in the next six months. And I think probably by June it will show up. Now, even though Chairman Powell was talking about possibly going from 25 basis points or a quarter percent to a half a percent, 50 basis points, not everybody believes that's going to happen. Peter Bookvar of Bleakley Financial Group still expects the Federal Reserve to raise by only a quarter of a percent and not a half a percent. He said, after taking an Advil while watching the questions being asked of Powell, and with Powell saying the dot plot in a few weeks will most likely tilt up in terms of the median endpoint of the Fed funds rate from the previous 5.4 percent, the Fed funds futures market is pricing in a 48 percent chance of a half a percent hike in two weeks. I do not think the Fed goes a half a percent at any of the remaining rate hike meetings at this point after already slowing the pace and will continue on with a quarter of a percent or 25 basis points until it finally starts. Stops. So the numbers have been pretty strong and the Fed is trying to talk the market down. Tim Lesko of Mariner Wealth Advisors said, all the market wants to do is go up, but don't be surprised if Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell does everything in his power to prevent that from happening. Equity markets seem to want to go up and he wants to keep a lid on things in a metered way, he said. He added, Powell's commentary before the Senate also served as a reminder to investors that inflation isn't done. The words today were really troubling for the equity market. They basically tell people that he's going to continue to talk rates up so that the market doesn't do what it wants to do. Yeah, the market is acting bullish. But one thing that's been very interesting that not a lot of people are talking about is the dollar strength. The dollar has actually been going up rather than getting weaker as many financial people have been predicting. The strength of the dollar is because people still go there as a place of safety. Even with all the debt that the U.S. has and even with the issues that are going on, it's still seen as a safe haven. So the dollar has been getting stronger and it's been at its strongest level since January 6th. So with Powell talking tough and threatening basically 50 basis point moves at the next March meeting, the probability of a half point interest rate increase is only about 51.3% according to the futures contracts. That's up sharply from 31.4% the day before and only 9.2% anticipating a half a point increase a month ago. Chairman Powell emphasized that the central bank still has some distance to cover before it can declare victory on inflation. He said the labor market remains extremely tight despite the Fed's rate hikes and attempts to cool economic growth. He also said we're very far from our price stability mandate and in effect the economy is past most estimates of maximum employment. So it looks like he's still targeting the employment market. He wants to see that get a little bit weaker. Unfortunately, that means layoffs for people is what he's targeting. And one interesting thing that Chairman Powell said was when he was talking about the debt ceiling. He warned senators in testimony about the potential consequences of failing to raise the debt ceiling. He said, we do not seek to play a role in policy issues, but at the end of the day, there is only one solution to this problem, and that is Congress really needs to raise the debt ceiling. That is the only way out. And if we fail to do so, I think the consequences are hard to estimate, but they could be extraordinarily adverse and could do longstanding harm. Well, of course, he's right, and the U.S. has already hit its debt limit, and the Treasury has warned Congress that it needs to authorize further borrowing before late summer or early fall in order to avoid a default. It looks like we'll be dealing with that later in the year. But for now, all eyes are on Powell and the job market, and unless we get some weaker economic data, it looks like interest rates may go up at a faster clip. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of new podcasts as soon as they become available. And all of my podcasts are in the Wealth Mentoring Library on my website at lindapjones.com. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.